Welcome to the show. We hope you have a blast. Thanks for making time for the Dealer Talk Podcast. Another business leader, here's a penny for your thoughts. This ain't a regular conversation, baby. This that Dealer Talk. Yeah. What up? Welcome to another episode of the Dealer Talk Podcast. This is your host, Herb Anderson. Thank you so much for tuning in. Very, very excited. Today is going to be our first Spanish, English, Spanglish podcast. So we have an amazing guest. Uh, Boris is from a uh, dealership out, uh, I believe a Toyota dealership out in, in Florida. And um, he's uh, he is from Venezuela like me. So it should be exciting. So Boris, welcome to the show. Como está todo? Thank you. Muy bien, muy bien. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, man. Thanks for being on here. So, nosotros te, uh, comenzamos con una intro. So, dinos un poquito acerca de ti. Uh, soy venezolano, ya lo dijiste. Eh, tengo 13 años en este país. Comencé en la industria cuando tenía como 20 años. O sea, ya tengo casi 21 años en la industria. Empecé por casualidad. Eh, yo soy graduado en sistemas porque estoy relacionado con las computadoras y así empecé, eh, me invitó un amigo a que ayudar a arreglar un día más de un concesionario en Venezuela, en Cumaná en ese momento. Y nada, ahí conocí al dueño del dealer, tenían un problema enorme con el día más, él tenía problemas con su computadora personal, así que ahí me invitó a que si no tenía trabajo, eh, trabajara con ellos como asistente de informática. Así empecé. Eh, después me, me ofrecieron si quería vender. Dije que sí. Como te dije, tenía 20 años. Eh, y nada, ahí comenzó a, a crecer eh, mi interés, obviamente, por esta industria. Bien joven ya manejaba todo el dealer, el director de operaciones, cuando tenía 26 años. Eh, y nada, después ahí sí. por cosas del destino, que, que creo que fueron buenas, terminé en este país. Y bueno, nada, aquí ya después de 13 años. <ríe> Aprendiendo otro lenguaje, otro, otro idioma, eh, otro negocio, porque es completamente diferente a lo que sí en Venezuela, porque es distinto el negocio completamente. Eh, y nada, bueno, eh, empecé también aquí de cero, aprendiendo todo de nuevo. Tuve la oportunidad de poder estar casi que observando al principio. Eh, en 2011 eh, me ofrecieron la posición de General Sales Manager. En 2013... Eh, general Manager del dealer eh, Toyota eh, y en 2019 tuve la oportunidad de, de convertirme en parte dueño de una, una franquicia Kia y en 2022 eh, un open point también de Kia, el segundo, así que nada, ahora trabajo en tres dealers. Qué bueno, qué bueno hermano, qué bueno. Coño, es interesante, hay muchas cosas que dijiste ahí que quiero expandir, pero lo, lo primero que se me viene en mente es la gente que está en esta industria, chamo, no importa, pare, parece que es mundial, pero no es algo que uno como que, como dijiste tú, como por accidente, a mí me pasó lo mismo, por accidente comencé yo a cambiar aceite y ese tipo de cosas y comenzó mi carrera, no fue algo que yo dije, ¿me entiendes? Esto es lo que quiero hacer. Y con tu historia, como lo que me estás diciendo, es lo mismo, fue, fue, es, es similar, ¿no? Como que comienzas por, por by mistake. Sí. De eh, hecho, hay un cuento que yo siempre decía que era temporal mi trabajo en el dealer, ¿no? Temporal, 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 yes. temporal. Y bueno, 20 pasado, años han después. 20 años yeah. En el temporal. Uh -huh. este, sí. so, um, ¿Cuál es la diferencia más grande que tú, que tú ves en, en vender en, 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 el, en el lado de ventas acá en Estados Unidos y lo que experimentaste allá en Venezuela? Um, bueno, Venezuela también es atípico en comparación con Sudamérica. En Venezuela no existen productos de financiamiento, por ejemplo, la relación es directamente del cliente con el banco, no existe esa intermediación de lo que nosotros hacemos aquí, de que nosotros somos aquí los que hablamos con el banco. Eh, productos de financiamiento no existe, eso de garantías, protección, wow. gap, eso nada de eso existe. Eh, es casi que la industria no se rige tanto como aquí, que de, a nivel de hay tanto volumen que te permite como que más o menos es demanda y oferta, obviamente, como, como, toda, como toda industria, pero allá como que los precios es un tema diferente. Eh, no es tan fácil entender cuánto es el valor de un carro usado, o sea, no existe tanta tecnología, obviamente, aquí hay mucha tecnología involucrada en que 
en que todo sea como más equilibrado. Eso ya no existe, ya es más o menos como... Sí, y es un fenómeno, ¿no? Allá y, y, un, y de... carro, un carro usado te puede costar más que un carro nuevo a veces, ¿no? Bueno, eso era antes. O sea, eso es particular lo que, pasa, lo que pasaba en ese momento, justo cuando yo me, me vine, 2008, 2009. Está pasando aquí también, que de repente hay un carro usado que cuesta sí, más que un sí. carro nuevo. Entonces, es eh, eh, irónico que como que viniéramos del futuro los que vivíamos en Venezuela porque estábamos acostumbrados a una inflación muy grande y a este tipo de cosas de escasez eh, donde la demanda sobrepasaba mucho la oferta. Entonces, bueno, el tema de los precios se distorsiona. Pero es más o menos similar a lo que está pasando hoy aquí. Es muy cierto eso, ¿verdad? Que si no, eh, ni siquiera lo puse en, en perspectiva, pero tienes mucha razón. Uh -huh. En español, ¿hacemos el podcast en inglés? Sí. Lo, 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 ¿Los venezolanos hablan inglés? Sí, <risa> lo, le vamos mezclando ahí. <risa> este, so, lo de los carros usados, ¿cómo, cómo, cómo hacían ustedes allá? Era, era diferente. Eh, el tema de los trades no existían. Era más que todo eh, venta de carros nuevos, sobre todo en esa época que yo entré en la industria, que fue en 2008, 2009. Um, no existía eso de que alguien tenía un carro usado, déjame te lo recibo a un precio, entonces financias la diferencia, eso, eso no existía, era más que todo, aquí está el carro nuevo, eh, lo quieres comprar, anda al banco, ven, este es mi precio, tú ve cómo lo consigues, cuánto es el down payment, cómo te entiendes con el banco, cuántas son tus cuotas, ya eso es otra cosa. Entonces eso, el carro usado como tal, eh, yo nunca tuve experiencia en vender carro usado, eh, desde, desde que empecé, empecé en un concesionario Toyota en Venezuela. Y cuando yo llegué a la industria, que fue en ese momento que, te, que, que o sea, no había, eh, no, em, cuando empecé no, no había tanto carro usado. So, just for, just for the listeners, uh, um, you know, uh, who, who've been following along, we're talking about some of the similarities and differences between the Venezuelan market and here. And uh, in particular, now we're talking about used cars. And it's interesting because Venezuela has been through an inflation period for so many years and kind of like the situation that we have here is mirroring. Um, so, you know, people like us with that experience, we're kind of used to this um, shortage, inflation, all those things. So um, it's funny to see the similarities. Yeah, that's a day to day. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like a day to day scenario over there. Yeah, it's, it's funny to see the similarities. For different reasons, for different, for different reasons, but yeah, it's kind of the same thing right now. Right now, it's a similar market. For sure. So, um, kind of moving things, moving things along here. Wh what do you think about? What are your? What's your feel about 2023? What do you think? There's a lot of things happening in the industry. Um, new cars, used cars, Carvana potentially going out of business. Any any predictions? That was funny. It was a. Uh, um, that was funny. It was early in a in a. I'm part of the. Google console and we were talking earlier. Uh, one of my question was what everybody think about Carvana. I think Carvana is failing for, for not the reason, uh, the media is putting out. It's not because the business model is not the right one. I think Carvana is failing because the way they manage the business was the wrong way. Yeah. They were using too much securities. They were using too many things. Uh, it's not the business. And I, and I kind of, I'm obviously from this industry. And I hate to see that model, model failing because I, I believe that's the future. You know, what they were doing, they were doing a lot of right things. I, I think what will happen with Carvana, somebody's going to be ending buying them and kind of use the, all the technology that they were using to sell these cars. But um, I think it's a lot of uncertainty about 2023. Um, I talked to bankers, like I obviously listened to uh, revenue calls from uh the bigger the biggest bands in the country and kind of listen to the manufacturers trying to understand what to expect but listen so far is no, no much change um i think we're gonna keep having uh issues with the supply on the new cars i see it in toyota i see a little bit in kia i see it pretty much in every manufacturer um even though they're expecting to sell like i think it's 15 million the SAR so far um that's a lot of cars yeah <laughs> we sell 50 million cars that's a lot of cars um i, I think a uh, used car is already being corrected uh i see it already like the last quarter of last year was um really um 
impacted the used car uh, market because all the cars came to a real number based on every, demand and supply. Yeah, it drops every week. Uh, well, daily, kind of yeah. like one well, percent yeah, every day. True. That was kind of that was kind of like a scary um, seeing, um, especially because. We're taking, well, not anymore, but we were taking a lot of deposits on cars that we didn't have available. And then we appraise the car, we make the deal, we put the numbers together. And then what happened, the cars arrived two weeks later, and now we're trying to do the same thing. And okay, the car drops $3,000. Right. Okay, now we're, whatever we were doing uh, three weeks ago, now it's not possible. And that was a really hard conversation that we use, that we need to have with the customer because how you explain that? It's not their fault. It's not our fault. What do you do with that? Um, but again, it's coming back to a, a normal thing. Um, a little bit scary, all the news about people losing their jobs, like all the big companies cutting and cutting and cutting jobs. That's the only thing that concerns me a little bit. I think the Fed is getting the result of what they were expecting. Inflation is coming down. That's healthy for everybody. Like We don't want that stupid and crazy inflation. Um, Again, I think this year is going to be stable. It's not going to be 2022. It's not going to be 2021. I think we already passed the best years in the industry uh, in terms of profit. Um, but it's going to be stable. Um, and I like it like that. Uh, that's one thing that I don't like about the Venezuelan business was that it was not predictable. Like right. you need to be listening to the news every day. You need to be on top of whatever was happening because your business could change in one day. Um, I like better when you plan, you say, okay, this is my plan. This is what the manufacturer is, is expecting to sell. This is the market that I want to conquest. And this is my potential market share. Um, this is how many units in operation I want. Like it's, it's more predictable. I like it better like that, like coming back to normal. <laughs> yeah, I think every month we are like, when is coming back to normal? When is coming back to normal? And yeah, no, it's, it's finally getting there. For sure. It, it's been good, man. It's been a good ride. We've made a lot of money. There's been a lot of profits in there. But the problem is that I see, there's two things that I see. On the, on the new car side, I'm concerned because there is inventory for certain manufacturers that isn't moving as quickly as I thought it was going to move, right? Because you have a lot of people that supposedly waited. I think Cox Automotive had a statistic out there that was three to five million people. I think five million is a little bit high, but let's take the three million number. Those are new car buyers that waited during the pandemic that didn't pull the trigger and now inventory is available and you're not seeing those those customers come out and buy right um and they're not buying and they're not and you can't even you don't even have alternatives maybe they're maybe they're brand loyals and they're waiting for the toyota or the honda that they can't get their hands on or whatever but my concern is that we, we're going to get into the situation where manufacturers are going to be forced to offer incentives again and if they do that then then they're go, they will go back to the volume play. And I think that when in the volume play where OEMs are shoving inventory down people's throats, it just messes up the market for everybody because everything becomes so cheap. And then dealers lose the ability to make profits. Yeah, I mean, they can still make it in the, in the box and all, and all that stuff, but it's just, you know, on the, on the per unit, you're going to see those numbers come down and down and down. And that's, that's concerned me. I was really hoping that COVID would, would kind of auto, maybe correct a little bit the profitability side of the business for, for franchise dealers in particular. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Um, I, when the pandemic started, when we start seeing those crazy numbers and profit from everybody, um, I had different conversations with different people. I like to talk. I like to be aware of what is happening, what people think. Um, it's one comment that still resonate on my on my mind. And a good friend that is part of the Saudi Toyota group, um, he mentioned to me, like, listen, the PBR is being 2,500, 3,200 for decades. Like, this is... 25, 40 years, 50 years between the same number. What make you think this is not going to come back to that? Um, I think is how you plan that. Um, I'm going to come into things of what, what you were saying. And this is funny because this morning I was seeing a numbers on uh, customer research 
Hmm. That didn't drop. That's still the same. It's hot. The, the search sure. and the interest and the interest from customer about buying a potential buying a new car is still the same that last year. That didn't drop. Mm -hmm. Drop the amount of people buying cars because I think interest and the mainstream out that like we're coming to a recession, we're coming to this. I think people have more fears now um, that's, yeah, that's to true. pay what the payment, the, the normal payment is. And as you know, um, the payment is being, I think 14% of the new car payment is over a thousand dollars. And the average is already in 700 mm -hmm. on new cars. That's insane. I think that's what is slowing down a little bit. What, what we're seeing in terms of sales, um, also is the manufacturers. And I don't know, it's because of the parts. I don't know if they COVID, I don't know if they don't have it, but now the cars are the more expensive one. Like. In the specific trends, we're getting the expensive ones, not not the regular one. Right. Um, and that is slowing down. That's what I see in a specific models, uh, especially from Toyota. I see a slowdown. For example, Highlander um, on the top, the top on the Highlander. I see that um, in a slow movement now. But everything else is is still in high demand. Like I don't have one Corolla sitting on the lot right now. I don't have I don't have in Kia one forty sitting on the lot today. Um, still, you know, running below five day supplies um, in in probably eighty percent of the of the models that we have from Toyota from Kia. And I think it's probably the same on for it's probably the same on Chevy. Like the specific models, yes, you see a more in inventory. I can have probably five six Highlanders today, but I have zero back for. I have zero Corollas, I have zero Tundras, I have zero Tacomas 4x4. Like, it still is, is, is a potential there, and I still see the profit, not to what it was before, but it's still healthy. Like, healthy, good. I hope, and that's my hope, I hope it continues. But, I mean, I mean numbers are numbers, math doesn't lie. If we get into a situation where incentives need to come back and you know we have inventory sitting on the lot that's going to force manufacturers to incentivize these units to move then that's going to hit our that's going to impact our profitability and i just i rather a situation i see it already yeah i rather have a situ uh, a situation like we have now where we don't have inventory and people have to wait because at least you're going to make more money per copy on the front end which is guaranteed money and then obviously you're you know, think about it this way. What, and we, I, I was having a meeting with a, with a dealer group the other day. What, what has been fluctuating uh, since COVID? PVR or um, back um, uh, finance? Well, both. Uh, I think both increase. I see an increase on finance too. Like before COVID, I think the national average was $1,200. Now I see public companies going to the two, two like right. that's a but it's been steady like incline percent increase it's been like this yeah it's a steady incline. pvr has been like correct. this correct you know what the years. Years. so correct. so, yeah, correct. so yeah. that's yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's and it's and it's determined more as you say because of manufacturing incentive right that's pretty much what it is like the front end the front end profit is coming more from the manufacturing incentive that like per car like making profit in every transaction yeah you're right. So I, I, I prefer, I prefer this environment. And then it, you know, what I like most about this environment also is the, the push on used cars, which has always been more profitable for dealers anyway. Well, not always, but you know, maybe the past, I don't know, seven, 10 years or so. Um, and so I don't know, man, I just, I just, I just hate that where the industry was before, where in some of these units, you're, you're, it's a twenty, thirty thousand dollar car, and you're making three hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollars a copy. It's like insanity. It's so cheap, and then the customer, yeah. they come in and they ask you for your, your invoice price. It's like no, like you don't, you don't go to the grocery store and ask me how much I pay for this bread before I put it out for sale. You know what I'm saying? Like I, it just, I, I hate that. I, I hate that we that we that the industry got to that place where we were making so little so little profit. But that's us. I think we did it to ourselves. Like uh, yeah, 
the volume game is coming because of us. We are the one putting that on the customer's uh, mindset. We are the one saying we're going to sell the car for invoice. We're the one doing that. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's coming back to what is the process you use in the store and how you feel, how you make the customer feel about it. Um, like I see already manufacturers having some kind of incentive. And, and the main reason is because interest rate being so high, like somebody with 800 beacon um, now is paying 6% interest rate on a new car. Um, I see a lot of the credit unions getting into um, growing mode and, and they're offering like 3.9%, 4%. And they're conquesting a, a, a lot of the customer and, and certain manufacturers, I think they wanna keep having the market share from their captive lender. Um, they need to come, that, that needs to come from the manufacturer putting mm -hmm. some kind of incentive to have a better lease program. I already see some special on leases. I already see some kind of reduction on, on interest rate based on manufacturer um, uh, need to show the customer they are still competitive. Like I, I, I see again, like 2.9%. I think Ford was advertising early this year, like 0% again for 48 months, I think. Like that's attractive. That customer, they don't know where that money is coming from. They like to see zero percent when everything is going to four or five percent sure money's coming from somewhere they don't know where and <laughs> um I, I see that more and more yeah no for sure and that's the other thing that was my other thing that i wanted to mention that i see for this year is the interest rate situation which to your point it has um it's doing what the government wants to do but it, it creates consumer confidence issues now that being said it's not that bad for 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 our industry it's bad because the customers have the perception and it does, they are, I, I agree with you, the, the digital activity is still up and people are searching, they're going to websites, they're looking for inventory, they're doing the research, all that stuff, but they're not necessarily transacting. But I think more than this, not more, but what's worse than the consumer fear is the salesperson fear. And I see a lot of that in the stores that I consult with. It's like the salespeople are concerned and they're projecting that onto the customer. And, you know, like, if you're buying a hundred plus thousand dollar car, yeah, that, it matters. But if you're buying a 40, 32,000 is the average car, we're talking about a hundred dollar increase in payment. So, I mean, it's not, you know what I'm saying? But that's a lot. That's a lot. A hundred dollars in payment is a lot. Well, but I mean, if you're going to go from four like, to five. It is like, correct. You it's know? a lot. It's 25% more. Uh, but again, like, um, and this is a, the uh, craziest stat. Like we were talking about an increase on twenty five percent on a payment for four hundred to five hundred. I don't think people receive a twenty five percent increase in salary. Like the ones that are making per hour, everything is expensive now. Rents are expensive. Sure. Everything like it's getting to a point. Like I don't think people are going to be able to pay for everything. Like going up. Um, I understand your point and, and you're coming from what is healthy for the industry. And I agree with you hundred um, percent. That's the economic side on that. Like uh, that's a smart way to see it. Um, I don't think uh, customers are ready yet. And talking about that fear from the salespeople, I think we, we need a shake. Um, I think the last three years were so good with so many people that I'm, afraid of everybody that got into this industry after COVID, they don't know what it is. They don't, they don't understand that. That's the same thing happened That's in Venezuela. True. Like, uh, when, when I was before 2007, six, eight, um, the industry was completely different. You actually need to go and sell the car. Um, in 2007, eight and nine, you, you have a waiting list, like the same thing you have today, like taking the pump. I, I come from that from Venezuela and that create a lot of laziness. Like I see the salespeople right now, they're complaining when they're not able to sell the car over MSRP. And I say like, okay, but that's, that's not because you were doing a better job before is because the market was driving the customer behavior like that. Like now you need to get a stronger and go back to training, go back to, I'm, I'm sure if you console dealers, you see like that needs to come back from management again, like, Hey, we need to wake up. Uh, we need this wake up call. 
And then we need to go back to what we used to do, like uh, more training, like create a better process, work on the customer experience. Like I see that coming back. I don't think dealers are ready for that. I think a lot of people are going to suffer because they're not ready to come back to what it was before. That I think was a great industry. That's what I love about this industry. Now more than ever, businesses need more efficient sales. That's why thousands of dealerships trust Four Eyes to help with things like automated inventory email updates and ensuring all of your leads get into the CRM. To try Four Eyes for free, visit foureyes.io slash dealer talk. That's foureyes.io slash dealer talk. Mm hmm. Yeah, you you hit you're hitting on on a really good point, and I do see that a lot with my when, with my with the stores I, I consult with is um, all the me, all the metrics for success are there, but the 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 one thing the big miss is um, the salesmanship side of it. A lot of the stores, I'm talking about the ones that I'm that I'm working with, they hired a bunch of people during COVID, and the majority of that sales staff are people that don't have prior experience. And so they don't know what it's like. And on top of that, they weren't provided any training during this whole thing, right? And so what happens is we forget, man, we forget that this wasn't just two weeks. This was two and a half years. And that drives that behavior. Mm -hmm. It's ingrained in, in your in your day to day. And it's very it's gonna be very hard to break those that cycle, you know, that that mindset. So I agree. That's what I love about that. Uh, because I know it's going to be hard for a lot of people to come back to normal. Like, um, I, I think that will open a lot of opportunity for hungry people to acquire more stores. Uh, for sure. That's my plan. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's because really... it's the, you know, like, it's some people that, yeah, it's some people that they don't sell, or they sold the stores because the money that they got offered from public companies and all of that, but... Everybody was making so much money that the numbers were so ridiculous. Like, okay, now we're getting like 20 time earnings from dealers that used to be three, four. Um, I think that was, that that's going to come back because when these people that they were ready for retire, that they make $10 million last year, when they start seeing everything coming back to what it was and it's struggling with that, I said like, no. Fuck no, I'm going out of that. <laughs> um, I think that's when the opportunity is going to be. Yeah, I think that's when the opportunity is going to come back for people that are hungry to grow. For sure. But yes, I agree with you. That, 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 would, that, that would be interesting to see in the industry. That was funny. I was in meetings like when all this uh, last year and, uh, and I saw dealers like, oh, we're doing a great job. I know. So like, really? <laughs> yeah. It's so like, mm -mm, if, it's a market. If you so like, no, you, you know, we are doing this. So like, okay. Yeah. If no. you didn't <laughs> set records, man, like, dude, like that's how bad your, your store and process must have been. You know what I mean? If you didn't like, if the, if the past couple of years weren't great years for you guys. So, um, the other thing, just, that, that would be interesting. Yeah. Just to move things along. I, um, I wanted to talk about the acquisition side and get your take on that because that's one that's been prevalent for me the past, it's been particular the past couple of weeks. So a lot of, a lot of decision makers are, are talking about, um, it's very difficult for them to acquire inventory. Like people were trying, they're still trying to buy their car, but they're like 10, $15,000 back of what they, what that car actually is worth. And the customer seems to always be on the, t on the last tail end of that. Like they're always, you know, they st they're still in the mindset that their used car is worth a bunch of money. And the, the reality is that the, that, that the markets, like you said, it's auto correcting. What's your take on that? Any strategies that you can share anything like what's your perspective on, on the acquisition side? Um, I think in the next four years are going to be interesting because obviously the reduce on the new car side we were selling 13 million last year and i think it was 12 into 2021 um the number that i see more is was not as much fleet like before like mm. uh, the rental car companies didn't have yeah many cars like usually the market for them they buy between one to two million cars a year and that's a lot of that is what is coming back fresh for 
uh, the used car side. Um, in this particular case, it's not going to be like that in the next in the next two three years. That's going to affect the used car. Um, I'm answering your question about acquisition. That's a lot to do with that, but I don't have problems acquiring cars. I I'll share with you uh, two things. My perfect scenario is getting as many trade as possible, mm -hmm. but also my used car inventory is being built based on if I know my markets want certain type of pickups, like doesn't matter, it's not Toyota, it's not Kia, they're looking for F-150. That's a, a, a hot car here in my market. I need to have two, three F-150s on my inventory to drive attention. Like that customer could be ending selling, uh, buying other cars, but I need to have what they're looking for. Right. Uh, that's my point of conversation. Like for me, the healthy way to have inventory is get as many trade as possible and build my inventory based on customer needs. That's not that that's not been easy lately because a lot of that is either you're trying to go and acquire those inventories from customers that that's the best way or you get that supply from the auction right that is being crazy uh lately um my the last year and a half my biggest strategy to have inventory is getting from trade i'm really aggressive going against inventory from customer I'd rather pay sometimes a little bit more for that customer car and being a little bit more aggressive there uh and trying to get that from the from the from the customer than trying to go and buy used car uh, outside either auctions or any other form of wholesale or whatever um for me the secret lately is mean buying from the customer you know if I need to put a little bit more to make sure uh, I acquire that inventory, I do it. Sometimes I buy cars, even if the customer doesn't buy the car for me. I'm really aggressive against that. Yeah. Um, again, I put, you know, I use CarMax as a bench for me, but sometimes I'm ending putting a little bit more on CarMax. But yeah, it's, it's, for me, acquisition is from customers. Yeah, no, for sure. And it has to be, it's just harder right now because with the shortage of new cars, trades are become more, you know, it's a lot more difficult to do that. And then we have to step up. And like I said, like a lot of these customers, their expectation is their car is worth way more than it actually is. And they're still in those COVID, they still have COVID numbers. And um, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's becoming more of a challenge for a lot of dealers. But I agree with you. Like, well, I think it, like a... I like to use, um, you're right. You know, the customer has a bigger expectation. Like sometimes that's not what the car is worth, but this is the same business we were three years ago. Right. How do you explain that to customer? Like you use the same tools, like, Hey, this is what is karma is CarMax is offering you. And I use CarMax because I think they're the perfect, uh, um, market um for customers like they trust the brand they right. trust carmax when you see carmax is giving you this they believe in that more than when any dealer say i'm gonna give you this i said like, hey, i'm gonna match whatever carmax so i even gonna put more than what carmax is offering you like even though you think it's like oh yeah but five months ago i get three thousand more than what you're offering me now you say, yeah but this is the reality now right um uh, you know um i, I think it's is 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 going back to what we were talking like i'm sure if every dealer go back to how many cars you actually lose because you didn't offer enough to the customer um Dude, they're gonna find you. Yes. 25 more cars everywhere right I'm a, I'm, well, i can well, assure you that or the worst right they'll go and they'll buy them at the auction for more money and you got to wait for that car to arrive and all this stuff and you could have just had it there you know what i mean just paid a little bit more then I, that's, it's just... yeah if 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 you go and audit any of the tools you were using for acquire inventory you will be surprised like sometimes you are 
willing to pay more in an auction than what you offered to a customer that was yesterday in your showroom. Right. And that's insane. But the that's re- insane. but that's our that's 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 uh, what's it called? That's psychology. That's human psychology. Like we're trying to get that it, that trade for we're just trying to rip it as much as we can so we can make more money on it when we sell it. But we, when, when we have the customer in front of us, we have that perception. But when we're at the auction, we don't have that perception. So our guard isn't in, our mind isn't in that state and our guard is down. And so we're willing to, to do it. It's the same thing. Like investing is the same thing. When there's a market crash, everybody wants to pull their money out and that's when they should be putting more money in. You know what I mean? So it's just, sometimes our own psychology works Um, against us. That's the reason, like for me, not from this, from COVID or, or new, I really forced the managers and the used car managers to have a meeting twice a, a week because they need to know what is happening in the market. They need to know, like, for example, yesterday we were, not yesterday, like a few days ago, we were praising uh, Chevy's 2019 um, with 40,000 miles. And when you see the tool, they know you need to buy this car for $26,000. And to make the deal possible, we need $28,000. And my, I was I was watching what the what the manager was doing and they say, we cannot give him 28 because if not, we were going to be underwater. And I, and I, and I get the manager and say, look, get out of, outside the desk for a little bit. Think about it. How many trucks with less than 40,000 miles in in this you know when you see the car the prestige the car how many do you have today sitting in your lot for less than thirty two thousand dollars right none, none. zero why you're not putting the 28 why are you doubting to put 28 in there and how many customers you see that came this week wanting to have a car that if you have something between 30 to thirty three thousand dollars that's the perfect car for that customer you see it last week and then you was there and then you're you are hesitating to put two thousand dollars more in this car to make the deal possible and make five thousand dollars in the car you're selling like are you kidding me like come on um but yeah sometimes we need to you know get outside you know see what it is and that was the reason i forced them to talk we need to have a meeting every week and we have two actually we have a meeting tuesday and, and fridays to see what has happened, how many cars were praised, what we lose, go back to this, what are we seeing on the auction, let's see what it is, or how many customers, the same way we evaluate parts, when we have a loss sale, how many loss sales do we have every day on the on the, on the the showroom because we didn't have the right car? Right. Who, who go back and go to that? Like, they need to go back and say, if I had a car like this and this and this and create their, their shopping list, that's what we do. And then we every week say, this is what we're looking for. Okay, everybody needs to be on the same page. But that's, that's I don't know if that answer no, no, the question it about acquisition, does. but that was. It's just, it's, cra- it, yeah, it's, it's just crazy to me. Sometimes I see these things and I'm like, dude, I wonder if they really realize what, what they're doing. And I know it's not intentional. It's just, it, it, again, it's just your, the, the way that, that the human mind works sometimes. It works against you if you're not, if you're not paying attention. Um, so well, I think like that's a, that's the reason you need to make sure everybody's on the same page. For sure, yeah. So um, I want to I want to go back to Carvana here really quick and get your take. Um, I know we talked about the whole bankruptcy thing and, and and all that, but what is your take on it? Let's say that we wake up tomorrow and there's news that Carvana went bankrupt. What are your thoughts? How how could that potentially impact the business? Would it be positive? Would it be negative? A little bit of both. What are your thoughts? Like, what can dealers do if that were to happen? And, you know, what, what, what could we expect? Or what would you do? To be honest, to, to be honest, I think we'll have zero impact on dealer operation. Um, my concern is because I'm really, I love to innovate on what we're doing. It's not much to innovate, but I like to be always ahead of the curve. I really love what Carvana was doing. I really love the focus they have to show the customer that transparency about the car. My car has a dent. That technology that we're using for the for to show used cars and kind of the model that we're using, even though they were against dealer and the biggest promotion they use is 
don't go and buy from a dealer oh, because they are uh yeah they're thief or whatever um beside that um i like what they were doing and i think if they fail this will create the wrong perception from dealers and they will some people are going to stop innovating because of that and they they will think the customer don't want that and it's not true i think all the customer wants the transparency i think we all needs to be better on that but i think carbana we if they fail i think somebody will buy it because some big group is going to buy their technology because i think it's great and if you know other nation group one Let's, yeah. one some of them they're, they're going to buy it because they're going to re replicate that and they're going to use whatever technology they were using for everything i think that was really um in terms of marketing having those powers pretty much all over us that was brilliant i think that was brilliant um, can you imagine if, if, if somebody I yeah, can you imagine if AutoNation or Lithia buys that? Like the advertising alone of those things, it's huge. Yeah, I think I think uh, you know it's getting to a point like they will be able to acquire them. Uh, I think will be a smart. Uh, but they, whatever they can use from them, uh, that will be a smart. Um, <clears throat> but again, I, I don't think the impact was already there. Um, it's not enough used cars to create an impact. Uh, CarMax is really strong. Um, and that was a better comparison than uh, Carvana because they really create a brand. If CarMax fails, that will create an impact on the industry. That will create an impact on dealers. But Carvana, they were not as solid to really create an impact on the market because they were not. Yeah, they were only. They were not a. Ten percent of the business. Yeah, they were. Them. Yeah, it was. It was. It, yeah. Yeah, they team. were not. They were not a. They weren't. They were not a player. But again, what they were doing is an open, uh, an eye opening for should be an eye opening for a lot of dealers, manufacturers. Like in the future, I'm not sure you will need as many dealer bodies as is today, because you can serve customer from you know where they are know where you want them to come and i think that's a good the good thing and the good learning about carvana i think they put that on the market and they put that on the dealer uh mindset and i think that's you know again they were innovators on the market i will sure. hate for them to fail um because i think they were a good um competitor they were competitive um but yeah i, I think will create zero impact cool yeah, I mean, um, my 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 only take on that would be that um, inventory might be cheaper to acquire. So if you're leaner right now, you may be able to buy some units at some cheaper prices. But I, it, dude, they just dumped four billion dollars in 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 debt yesterday. I think they're going to fight this thing all the way down to the to the end. So it'll be. They should. I think they should. Um the business was not wrong um i think they will they will play in, uh the wall street game uh creating the securities on the notes they have uh that that really because of whatever will happen with inflation and the interest went up that work in reverse for what they were expecting and that would what is creating that uh horrible numbers on the every revenue call but when you see how many cars are they're selling they're actually selling more and they're making money and they're spending on the business on the business only business they're they're more efficient than us they're more efficient than dealers because they're using less people to to actually transact with the customer to get it done um yeah. if you set yeah if you isolate that and don't see the stupid expensive on marketing and don't see the stupid expensive on, on technology. They're profitable. You know, they make money. It's a business there. I think they should fight. They should fight. But I believe somebody's going to come and buy. It. Yeah, that makes or they're going to fight. The same way I think somebody's going to come and buy. Yeah, I, I, uh, somebody's going to buy Peloton the same way. I think those really strong company now is not worth much, but I think somebody's going to buy it. The same thing. I, I think somebody's going to come and buy Corban. Yeah. Right on, man. Hey, dude, thank you so much for doing this. Muchas gracias, hermano. Un placer conocerte y...
conectarme no, por no, aquí un placer, contigo. un placer igual. Gracias por... por Estamos uh, a la orden. Ya, yeah, gracias por compartir con nosotros tus, ¿Dónde, tus, ¿Dónde estás? ¿En California? Yo vivo en Las Vegas. So, ah, sí, tengo. En Las Vegas. Llegué a Michigan cuando me vine, cuando ganó Chávez. Me vine inmediatamente, fui a Michigan. Uh. Y después, uh, en el 2009, me mudé para Las Vegas. So, tengo... Bien. Tengo tiempito. Buena decisión. Sí. Buen timing. <risa> Buen timing. Eh, ¿Tienes sí. familia ya tú todavía, me imagino, no? No me queda tanta. Me quedan algunos eh, tíos. Eh, no mucho. En verdad quedan como cinco, más o menos, de toda mi familia. La mayoría está Argentina, eh, aquí en Estados Unidos, eh, Chile, eh, Colombia. Pero muy pocos, muy pocos en Venezuela. De, de hecho, yo tengo 14 años que no voy, así que... Oh, wow, sí. Ya ni, ya ni me acuerdo mucho. 2010 fue la última vez que fui ya. So, um, Yo también, 2010. Dos, no, 2009. 2000, yeah. Wow, cómo pasa el tiempo, vale. Pero sí, Pero bueno, lo, igual. En, en Navidad, sí, en, las Navidades son las que me afectan a mí lo, 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 lo máximo. Eso, eso sí, siempre. Pero sí, tengo toda mi familia está allá todavía. Yo... Um, mi novia es de Paraguay so ahora me voy para Paraguay con ella y es, uh -huh. es bien similar el, del, el, ella es de un pueblito chiquito como yo también y es, tiene la misma vibra ¿me entiendes? So. cool, buenísimo pero bueno, estamos a la orden ¿Sí? igual, lo que quieras, gracias por la invitación es siempre bueno hablar de, de la industria y compartir opiniones exactamente there is one question though that we ask everybody And that question is, where do you see the automotive industry headed in the next five years and why? Um, I see the industry changing because they need to. I think we need to have a more transparent um, business. And I, I see that moving that way. I see that coming. Right on. There you have it, everybody. Boris, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for, for joining us. And uh, that's all the time that we have for today. And as usual, we'll talk later. We only host the well respected. The vendor Lexus Nexus. We don't sell digital marketing. What you do? We inspect it with our DT vendor management. Now more than ever, businesses need more efficient sales. That's why thousands of dealerships trust Four Eyes to help with things like automated inventory email updates and ensuring all of your leads get into the CRM. To try Four Eyes for free, visit foureyes.io slash dealertalk. That's foureyes.io slash dealertalk.